Next up, our other another favorite of ours is DJI News. Mm -hmm. So we've got a couple of DJI things to let you know about. First up, DJI Goggles 2. Turns out okay, that backwards so compatibility you... thing, it's coming. Oh, uh, it's coming. It's coming. So we saw uh, uh, some people post on the internet uh, uh, basically that they updated their goggles, their goggles too, and saw in the menu mm -hmm. this, new, this new option for the DJI FPV Air Unit, the one we kind of mm -hmm. showed a version of with other drones in it. But now we've got that finally mm -hmm. in, uh, in a firmware that people got to flash to goggles. Yeah, um, here we here we have Madstech's video showing the screen of Madstech's goggles with the option to switch to the DJI FPV Air Unit. And I just want to be very clear here, Blunty, <laughs> that everything we're going to talk about in this segment is based on the content of Madstech's video, and that uh, uh, I I uh, also saw this option yesterday. I was updating my goggles to make a video about buying the O3 Air Unit. I thought, oh, I should be on the latest firmware, so I forgot that my account is flagged because I'm so used to being on the outs with DJI, but they, they put me in the tester group for the uh, new O3 air unit. Cause I was part of the release and I forgot that I had access to pre-release firmware and I was like, Oh, it's here. And I made a post on my uh, Facebook and on my YouTube, but like, Oh, it's here guys. And then I was like, wait, Oh, it, other people were like, we don't see that option. And uh, they were like, are you in the test group? I was like, Oh shit. So I didn't want to piss them off. So I took it down. And I, 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 it's great that Madstick put this video out because we can talk about Madstick's video and then I'm not leaking anything. Right? That's true. how it works, right? That's true. Okay, that's, continue. That's one way to look at it. Okay. I hope that's how DJI looks at it. All right. So, um, <laughs> so we got a couple of cool things that we learned here. One thing we had no idea about that we hoped about, but we didn't know. Uh, we got Canvas Mode. Yeah, or yes. fake, sorry, fake canvas, MS, MSP display port. MSP display port, thank you. Dominic Clifton uh, will appreciate us saying uh, it correctly. So, yeah, we did, definitely did not expect that, but that's pretty cool to see that that happened. Uh -huh. uh, it was kind of a, as a bonus. Um, like you said, this only available for beta and tester accounts. It seems like uh, that might have even been an accidental release to them. It's not clear. Um, so we'll see when this comes out. They said before December, so we would expect sometime in December for this to get finalized. Um, power output options are very odd right now. It seems like you use, it's it's sort of adopting a lot of the features of the O3 Air Unit. So mm -hmm. like you get 40 megahertz, 20 megahertz, 10 megahertz channel sizes instead of the 50, 25 like we used to get. You get limited channel counts without the hacks, but the hacks now don't seem to increase power like they did. Like currently you can't see power output options just like the O3. So mm -hmm. you can't tell if anything's working, it seems like because you're using the goggles too, there's no 1200 milliwatt hack great right, for the goggles too. Yeah. So the assumption is that if you do the NACO hack on the air unit, while it's on the new firmware, it seems like it's increasing power to 700. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're getting the FCC power, but you're not getting 1200, but it's pretty rough right now. And it's hard to get any concrete information because DJI doesn't tell you what the power is. So just to be clear, this requires an update of firmware on the goggles too and an update of firmware on the Vista, on the Air unit. Uh, and then that enables this functionality. And from what Madstech shows, it seems to sort of convert the Vista over to a sort of way of transmitting that's closer to the O3. For example, uh, Madstech showed that they have the 10 megahertz channels, the 15 megabit per second mode, which, they, which was never available on the V2 before. Uh, Madstech is in the comments. He says he got the NACO hack working uh, that's, yeah, that's of course. Was, the, yeah, yeah. The the seven hundred milliwatt thing seems to work, but the twelve hundred does not, as what oh. you're saying, I believe. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and currently, if somehow you have access to this firmware, also bear in mind that it you no longer can bind to the goggles, the V2 goggles, because presumably they also need a firmware update to bind to this new firmware, and it's not available yet, is what I'm hearing. Also, I don't think the radios have a firmware either. And they so. will not bind to the radios. That's that's also correct. That's what I'm hearing. So yeah. if you decide to play with this, know that you're sort of taking a step forward and you're making a lot of your stuff. Presumably when it actually releases, it will be fixed. And there may be other bugs and changes that we don't know about because this is pre-release firmware. But what is exciting about this is it certainly confirms that it, DJI is going to give us some form of backwards compatibility between the goggles two and the older air, I mean, at this point, 
the, the amount of work they put in means that they're actually going to do it. Um, now, Madstech, yeah. Madstech had a, a, a suggestion. He doesn't think that the V1 goggle is going to get this. And he thinks this is going to be a one-way trip forward. That if you flash all this stuff, it, your stuff will just stop working with the V1 goggle. Uh, that's uh, and I don't know yeah. how many people I mean, out there still happen. have the V1s. Yeah. yeah. It definitely could happen. It's hard to know how they'll do it. Um, if that is the case, and like... Yeah, I don't know. It, it look it'll depend on how the V2 implementation works, right? Like yeah. I think we'll have to see. Like if you flash the V2s and now there's a new mode like in the O3, like in the other side, you mm -hmm. know, like mm -hmm. if it's in that new format and that's how mm -hmm. you're binding to the air unit after the update, then mm -hmm. I would agree the V1 probably won't get it. If yeah. there's just an update to the DIY side of the V2 somehow and that enables a binding to the new firmware, well, the, right? The change is gonna. The problem I think uh, that Madstech is anticipating is that once you put the new firmware on the VTX, it will right. only bind to an O3 style goggle. Well, that, that's the what V1 I mean. Can't we gotta do find, that. Yeah, we got to find out if the V2 update is on the O3 side to bind with the new air unit or if it's on the DIY side and there's some solution DJI has to bind. You know what I mean? Like, we don't necessarily know, like, if there's not a legacy mode in there or some way that it can yeah, still but it's, bind. It's, it's, uh, but uh, it would mean that I, I would mean that your hmm. I think the only problem would be if they start shipping air units with this firmware on it. At that point, if there if that firmware was not backwards compatible with the V1, then well, the air yeah. units would lock out the V1. I think is yeah. if they continue to ship them with the 0606 firmware on there, then all the V1 pilots have to do is just not update. Yeah, and they're absolutely. fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, is it true that the maximum output power is two watts? Asks Brandon Beans. Brandon Beans, the FCC paperwork says that it could transmit up to two watts. We don't know that it does. It it it's EIRP. Don't forget that. Right. So. Oh, that includes uh, that's EIRP. That includes the antenna gain. That's correct. And so mm -hmm. I had a long discussion with uh, uh, somebody on uh, WTF uh, the FEV WTF Discord earlier. And what we kind of figured out is, I think what they're doing, and I don't know for sure, but mm -hmm. I think what they're doing is adding in the MIMO gain to the EIRP. Oh. Be because technically, if you look at how EIRP is calculated with MIMO, you're supposed to add in MIMO gain. And it's mm -hmm. 10 times log of whatever the number of TX chains you have. I see. So, so you get 3 dB with 2 TX chains and 6 dB with 4 TX chains. So it's possible that we're seeing the 3 dB increase because they added TX chains or they were like, you know what I mean? They're changing it because basically... So they're, they're not actually the blasting works, 2 watts. The FCC paperwork still says 700 milliwatts. It's the same as the original right. air unit. So my guess is that it's still doing what they said it would do, you know, because the original said ERRP less than 30 dBm. And the guess is that that means 28.5 plus 1.5, and that would be 700 milliwatts. So that would be legal. Right. Uh, so if the, if it's the case that the new one's less than 33 and still says 700, then I would guess that there's three dBm from somewhere. Either they're using a different antenna or they're using a different, like a gain from the MIMO or, or something. You, like that. You're saying you don't think it has additional actual output power from the RF amplifier. I don't necessarily think we should use that specific number to guess that. I think we've okay. got to use analyzers to find that out somehow. Well, that's I don't typical. think we've seen that's... evidence. That's typical. Yeah. Madstech says there is, yeah. uh, it's the same power amplifier. There's no major changes in the front end, which suggests okay. that they would have about the same output power. I mean, yeah. uh, we've, you and I have speculated that just the fact that the new system uses H.265 instead of H.264 means it can deliver better image quality at lower bit rates, which will give it better range and penetration in terms of usable range. So, yes. yeah. you know, that alone could make a difference. Well, this is exciting. Uh, I, I, I always say, and I continue to say, wait until we see the final product before we draw any conclusions. Uh, for example, there are people out there who have the, the V1, the black controller, and they use it to fly all their quads. And if that doesn't get forwards compatibility, then the fact that the goggles too might get backwards compatibility won't be, uh, they won't feel good about that. But uh, it is nice to see that this is coming, in a, you know, and to see the direction it's going. I mean, so. it's better than not having it. That's the way I look at it, right? So, yeah. Like, they yeah. did it. And then if you want to use it or not, like, that's the sort of right. way. Yeah. Like, the stupid bug, the binding bug, where when you switch modes, you lose your binds, still there. I so stupid. I don't understand stupid. why that's... I, I assume maybe somebody technical from the FPV 
WTF project can let us know. I remember there being some kind of like flag and then, you know, there's a reason why when you rebind one Vista, all of them come back and it's because it's still stored right. in there. Yeah. It's just like picking, it's almost like picking the set of binds you're using or something. Right. And it yep. seems very weird that it just doesn't toggle that switch when you switch over. You so, know? so it has that bank in there. Yeah. It knows the, it knows the binds. It just sort of forgets yeah. them temporarily. So my point yeah. is, that bug is a stupid, stupid bug that for some people will be a deal breaker and other people yeah. will go, oh, God, okay, I'm just going to live with it. That's worth it. And everybody will make their own decision. So, yeah. um, Blunty, before we go on, I just want to share the beautiful, beautiful memes uh, that are happening in the, in the Discord. Uh, Black Jungle has been making amazing memes and I feel like they deserve recognition. <laughs> so here's here's the meme from back when someone was thinking that speedy b had problems and it was really a beta flight bug <laughs> and uh here's the meme from red cat selling road riot <laughs> and we got one more we got one more here's the meme here's the meme from the fcc so uh i'm uh oh and uh and also this i'm uh I'm, I'm, I'm a, I wouldn't say I'm a connoisseur of memes, but I do appreciate a good meme and I respect the creators of memes. So let me just shout that out. Okay. Uh, what next? Uh, we've got one more DJI story. Um, some oh, people man. are confused about pricing and we want to let people understand a little bit about what happened. So a lot of people saw DJI goggles two pricing at 569. There's even a couple websites, but it's still there, but I figure it's better not to share those just directly. Cause we don't, mm -hmm. we can't verify if they can support that price or not. But what we can tell you is that uh, this happened at a bunch of different places and pirate drone posted a response about that to let us know exactly what happened. Um, and it, everybody was confused because the price bumped up to 650 from 569, mm -hmm. and they were worried that people were like, "Oh, is that a Black Friday price or a sale?" Um, and it turns out that no, that's not the case. Uh, DGI changed the price on retailer, so they told retailers, um, at least Pyro Drone claims that they told retailers um, that there would be a 569 uh, retail price. That was the map, map pricing. Um, they charged them X amount of price, you know, that sort of thing. They said, this is what you'll pay. This is what you'll charge. And then they set up pre-orders under that pretense. Then DJI contacted them later and said, hey, it's going to actually be $649. Um, it seems like, uh, you know, currently we don't know. The response was they're not sure if they'll have to pay more or not. DJI has not told them that they'll have to pay more, right? Because they've already paid for the units. Um, so it seems like that they will only pay, you know, whatever they were going to pay. And they are honoring, uh, these prices, um, at 569. Mm -hmm. And good for Pyrodrome. That's a, that's a real Chad move and it's going to cost them, it's going to cost them money. Well, Pro I mean, technically yes, because they could update the price and sell it for the same amount. But it sounds mm -hmm. like from what they're saying, DJI hopefully will charge them the same price and they won't actually take a loss here, right? They'll take a loss on prospective sales but not on like right. increased cost from dji hopefully so yeah i mean if if yeah. dji were to raise if dji were to sell take their money and sell them units at a certain price and then say you know the deal has changed you know like darth vader <laughs> uh then that would be a pretty uh well potentially a legally actionable move although who right. knows how that would play out so probably they're not going to do that um but uh probably a lot of other stores are just going to jack the price to 569 um and uh, Pyro is going to stand by the sales and, and, and honor the agreement they had with their customers, even though it, they won't make as much money as they could otherwise. So good for them. That is a, that is a good, good guy move for them. Uh -huh. And yeah. frankly, uh, no less than I would expect from, from Surge and Pyro. Uh, that's how he yeah. runs his business. So if you see 569 out there for the DJI Goggles 2, you know why. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, they should be 649. Yeah, If you see them somewhere for that price, you know, uh, feel free to pre-order them. Because, again, I saw them at least one retailer today still has them at that price. It's just not clear if they will be able to honor it like Pyro is doing um, or if you'll end up having to pay more or get a well, refund. So. It sounds like it depends a lot on whether the store has already paid for their pre-order at the 569 right. price. Because presumably be when good, yeah. DJI jacked retail, they presumably also will jack the wholesale. They're not just going to give more margin to the to the stores. So presumably future wholesale orders will be at a higher price. If a store still has the listing up at 569, but they're buying them from DJI at the 649, then the store may not be able to honor that because there may not be enough margin for them to actually cover cover their profits. So... 
But it's worth putting, probably worth putting in the pre-order. You never know. Right, um, do, cool. do you remember the ship date for those goggles? Have uh, you heard anything no, about the ship end. date? I saw different numbers, but I didn't see anything concrete because they've been up for a long time. Yeah. So, like, I think, like, the Get FPV and the Pyro, I believe, had a date of sometime in December, but they were up for, like, weeks. So I wasn't mm -hmm. sure if that was, like, a hard date or a soft date, you know. Pacific Northwest says race day quad is shipping mid-December. I heard okay. somebody said somebody said after New Year, which I was like, oof, that's a long time to oh, wait. I heard December 10th to the 15th, somewhere in there, but I'm not sure if that's, like, current or if that was, like, what was expected before. Joe Mama says the ship date ETA from DJI to Pyro was January. Interesting. Uh, yeah. So Bobby Bag says my goggles too shipped today from DJI. Okay. Quite DJI. A mess up there. You think DJI? You're not gonna. You're not gonna speculate about this with me. You're more conservative. Do you think DJI is withholding the wholesale, uh, the the reseller shipments and trying to get more direct sales because they get more margin on them? No. I don't think DJI cares. That would be, that would be irresponsible. I don't oh, think they do, care. Don't man. they care? Don't they care? Because no. the because the video. Listen to this. I, this okay. is a fact. The video embargo was eight a.m., but the stores were not allowed to take pre-orders until nine a.m. Why would that be? Why would you do I that? Don't know. I don't so know. you could get more direct sales through your own website. Okay, sure. But, like, why would DJI care? I don't know. Money. Like, because money. I don't know. Yeah, but you're charging your retailers some crazy margin, and then you lose the you lose all the logistics of having to ship. I don't know. Like, I would be interested to know how much more they want that than just having all their dealers handle all the stuff. And it sounds like a pain in the ass to me. I would just want other people to do that. I that's agree. what I mean. I feel like it's much easier to just, like... Yeah. Ship that shit to retailers and have them handle pre-orders and deal with customer complaints and returns. Customers are the worst. Oh, that's that's the true. worst. They're the worst. <laughs>